Good morning, Ooh. dear Toastmasters and guests. Welcome to the Petrofac Toastmaster meeting number 261. As a Toastmaster, uh, we know one thing, which is our mission statement, which says that we provide a positive and supportive learning experience in which all members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and uh, personal growth. Before we start our meeting, I need to remind you about a few things. Uh, first one is uh, safety rules. Uh, in case if you hear any fire alarm in your building, please, first of all, take care of yourself. Uh, second thing, uh, respect towards the speaker. If you are not a speaker, please keep your mic muted. If you are a speaker, of course, <laughs> keep on mute and the video on. Another thing is our taboo topics. During the meeting, we are not discussing about uh, sex, religion and politics. And since it is a weekend early morning, please, please uh, feel free to have your breakfast. With that, Please join me in welcoming our captain of the ship, our president, Toastmaster Muhannad. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. In, in Toastmaster debates, you either learn or you win. There is no lose. No one lose. Everyone learn from this. And today we have a special guests. He is so special, he's so super that he could beat Petrofac in 2018 during the competition. Hence, he's the best person who can learn from him how to win a debate. He is a graduate from mechanical engineering from Palakkad College in Kerala. He's very known for us because we used to interact with him at the different levels and he's working in a global valve industry since 2001 till. And he's having an engineering general training company in Dubai and he's having his own restaurant. He started his journey in Nahda Toastmaster as VB membership and then he becomes an area 54 director. And then he becomes a, the vice president of public relations of Pioneer Clubs. And then he becomes Tegas president. And he has achieved the distinguished Toastmaster in 2020 and becomes a sponsor of the Pioneer Club. Before joining the division, the, 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 the divisions, he also won in 2019's District 105 the debate competition. He loved theater, acting, writing. He's a superstar. He full fledged man. Let's all welcome our trainer today, DTM Vipin Divakar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Mahmoud, for that uh, that overwhelming, heart heartwarming uh, introduction. Wonderful introduction. Thank you so much. And also heartfelt thanks uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, to conduct this session. Petrofac Toastmasters, as I said, is not new to me. In 2016-2017, when I have uh, taken the role of area director for area, 20, area 54, there were five clubs and uh, under, under area 54 and one among five was Petrofac. And at that time, the division director was none other than uh, our own my very, very good friend, Toastmaster Fahim Khan. Nice to see you, Toastmaster Fahim. It's a great pleasure actually to be with you. And there are very familiar faces like uh, Toastmaster Jacob and uh, Toastmaster Hemant. Yeah, it's nice to be. It's 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 like, you know, visiting my family and friends. So it's it's a great feeling. So it's a it's a morning time. Let's make this day awesome. Very good morning to each one of you. Now, 
let's come to the topic debate. See, have you ever thought of why we should participate in debates? From my experience, we can. We can definitely improve the following skills. There are quite many things which we can improve through debate skills, but from my experience, what I feel there are a couple of couple of important qualities which we can improve. One is your impromptu speaking skills. Then your ability to think and speak logically. To coordinate with your among among the team members, how to be a good team player. That is also very, uh, very important quality which you can develop through debate. How to put forward your arguments in a convincing manner. How to convince a crowd with your arguments within a time frame. So these are the important thing, important qualities which you can develop through debate skills. And another important one is the negotiation skills. Of course, in Petrofac, uh, definitely it's a it's a it's a great quality which you have to develop, uh, especially in the professional uh, point of view. So there are many many qualities which we can develop through debate. But these are the most important qualities which you develop if you participate in a debate contest or even if you prepare for a debate contest. Now, last couple of years, the topics for debates were something which uh, we can Google it and uh, arrive at arguments. But nowadays, the contest coordinators are sitting in in such a way that the topics are connected to you know some metaphors which is actually correct so that the speakers can use their own their own logic and uh, they can speak on their own con in, in their own convincing manner it actually gives the speakers to show their convincing argument skills rather than googling skills whatever said and done any topic under the sun can be debated for and against. So if you have convincing arguments with you, for or against doesn't matter. Any topic, whatever be the topic, for or against, you can speak if you have that convincing way of arguments, you know, generating your arguments. So last a uh, couple of weeks back, Alnada Club debate had topics like you should take the road less traveled. See such you can such uh, such topics you can expect this time. The topics are uh, metaphors. So metaphors, the beauty of it is that. You can sp speak from your heart. You can speak from your experience, life experience rather than Googling. See when you have a topic related to some facts or figures, then definitely you have to Google it, but when you have a metaphor, you can speak from your own. So nowadays, the I have seen such topics uh, in many, many contests. Some metaphors, you are, they are giving some metaphors. So topics are uh, now a little bit changed. You cannot always depend upon the World Wide Web. So the good thing about now, see, for any, any debate contest, there are certain set rules which the participants should follow. And I am uh, you actually you should be very proud that in all these rules were set by none other than a team consisting of the Toastmaster Fahim. Then uh, now uh, at that time, uh, the division director Anish John and together. So you can be proud that all these rules were set by your own team member. So congratulations uh, Toastmaster Fahim. I am repeating the same rule in front of you, which create which was created by you actually. So your team. So uh, I'm very happy that uh, uh, I am I'm explaining the the same rules in front of uh, Petrofac and that too in front of Toastmaster Fahim. So let's go go through the uh, rules in detail. I will share my screen now.
are you able to see my screen now presentation can you give me uh, show yes. me a thumbs up yeah yes all right yes all right thank you thank you thank you so let's uh, let's see the club debate contest uh, the rules and uh, the thing regulation so the basic the key basic rules we should have three members in a team for sure we should have a three mem we should have three members and any member in good standing can participate in, in good standing in the sense uh, if uh, your membership fee everything is uh, already paid everything is clear then you are a good standing uh, member in the club so any good standing member can participate in the debate contest normally there will be three rounds preliminary semi-finals and finals but it all depends upon how many numbers how many number of teams you have if you have more number of teams you should definitely have preliminary rounds or if for suppose if you only have four teams then straight away you can go for the semi-finals and then the finals so it all depends upon the number of teams which you have then one team the winner of your club debate will compete in icdc in the club division contest see there is no restriction on originality you can take facts and figures from worldwide web google books or from any source for that matter of fact and you can use notes and there is no negative marking for using notes if you use notes you are not going to get more marks or you are not going to get negative marks from judges so notes are permiss per permitted now the regarding the strategy see preparation is definitely a key in debate contest preparation is the key i personally participated in alnada toastmasters club debate contest last two weeks back without any preparation i was just coming from somewhere and then attending that along the along with the team and it was just a casual preparation cas casual participation basically knowing that we will fail and we failed so though it's a fun we need to prepare to maintain the entertainment value of the contest of the competition so what is preparation the team members should discuss their strategies well in advance see once you form the team say one week before the contest you should discuss with your team members your strategies well in advance the team should work on their chemistry well in advance this is very important because it's not an individual contest it's a team game so the chemistry among yourself are very important all the team members should help each other to frame the arguments for example when you are on the hot seat the closing speaker can help the opening speaker to prepare his points right and of course the rebuttal can also help but the rebuttal speaker normally used to you know think about what the other opponent speaker will speak and then he needs to create his own points actually so he might be busy at that time but the closing speaker can help the opening speaker during the framing the points of the opening speech so such team you know the chemistry should work among yourself among the team members that is the most important thing in the winning strategy of any debate so then you should be updated with the current affairs read newspapers of course it cannot be you know all of a sudden but uh, you need to get updated with all the current affairs things and watch as many debates as possible which are available in youtube make yourself ready for the battle and also try to learn the strategies different styles which the rebuttal speaker or even the closing speaker how they are speaking in uh, that it, it is available in the youtube you can watch different styles how the debaters handle the situation so that is also very important you should be you know uh, ready for the battle so you have to 
get prepared with the small phrase. There will be a lot of phrases actually, which uh, the debate, the rebuttal speakers and the closing speakers uses. So that you have to uh, get it from different different speeches, which is available in YouTube. Now, so there are two teams, Team A and Team B. T team A is, uh, for example, it's an opening uh, the for the topic team which uh, supports the topic, who supports the topic and the team B is against the topic. So team A is for the topic and team B is against the topic and first speaker is the opening speaker who will build the case. Then second speaker is the rebuttal speaker who will rebut the opening speakers. This opponent teams opening speakers main points, okay? And the third speaker who will summarize the points of his own team's opening and rebuttal speakers main points in a very convincing manner in style. So once again, there are two teams for and against. Team A is for speaker one of team A is the opening speaker who will build the case. Speaker two will rebut the points of the opposition uh, teams that is team B's opening speakers points and team and, the, and the, the last speaker is closing speaker who will summarize the the points of his own team's points like opening speakers and rebuttal point, uh, speakers main points he will summarize it in a in his own style in a very uh, style stylish manner actually yeah so let's see what exactly the opening speakers role Opening speaker has to state his team's position on the subject. Identify the main elements. Present your main arguments with reasons. That is, you can you you have to support with the appropriate facts and figures, and logically you argue that point. And also, it's which is very important. Try to restrict the arguments to four to five main key points. You can have sub points from that main point, but you should have four to five points. Also, make sure that these points are difficult to refute by the opposition team. But that doesn't mean that you should state vague points. Means. There are I have seen certain opening speakers who will come and make a lot of confusions. But that is not right because you know the judges will also get confused. So then you will get negative marks. You have to uh, write script your points, the opening speech points, so that the opponent rebuttal speaker find it very difficult. But that doesn't mean that you should be you should confuse the audience judges and the opposition uh, opponent speakers no so that you have to take care because in if you do like such vague points then the danger is that you will fetch negative marks from the judges so that is the role of the opening speaker building the case in a very very effective manner now what is rebuttal challenge opponents points of view logically with appropriate facts and figures with uh, earlier discussed. You can get the facts from Google, uh, from books, from friends and, and different sources actually. So but whenever you whenever you uh, rebut a point, it has to be very logical. Through flaws or weaknesses in opponents arguments, find out what are the what are the uh, weaknesses in, in your opponents arguments. Find out the flaws in them, you know, all in all in the in your opponents opening speakers points. You should counter very passionately, passionately in the sense you should not be very OK. You can be aggressive, but you should not hurt any person, hurt anyone. You know, personally, you should not hurt. I think uh, and don't uh, try to tr don't try to bring uh, new points. And especially for rebuttal, you have to use you have to instill humor. There also you have to be a little bit careful when you instill humor. You should not hurt anybody's personal. Personally, you should not hurt anyone. 
So these are very important in rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal speech. Appropriate, see, uh, rebut with appropriate figure, facts and figures logically, counter very passionately, instill humor wherever it is possible without hurting the uh, without hurting anyone personally. Then don't try to bring new points. What is this? Don't try to bring new points because you have to rebut the points which your opponent team opening speaker has mentioned. Say, for example, he has mentioned four to five points. You should not bring any new points to strengthen your argument. No, of course you you can you can bring points to support speaking against their points, but don't bring any new points to uh, strengthen your uh, team's stand. No, that has to be careful. Now the summarization. Summarization is like a fantastic dessert in a three course meal. Summarize it in your own style. You have see everybody has their own style, but you can you can summarize in your own style in a very convincing manner. Touching all the main points of your team members, that is your opening speaker and your rebuttal speakers main points. That doesn't mean that you know you have to repeat all the points which your opening speaker and rebuttal speaker has mentioned, but you can select very important point very the points which were very uh, strong enough uh, you know that points you can bring from your opening speaker and from your rebuttal speaker and summarize it in a very uh, in a stylish manner in a to 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 make an impact over the judges and the audiences then the audience and the judges you know will have uh, a feeling that they had a fantastic meal here also the closing speaker also should not introduce any new arguments. You should only take the points which your opening speaker, which you are opening, your, your team's opening speaker and rebuttal speaker has mentioned. Now oh, this is the speech sequence. The first speaker of the debate will be the opening speaker from the fourth team, that is team A, speaker one will build the case then team B, that is the against teams, opening speaker will build the case. Then the third speaker is from against team, that is team B, the rebuttal speaker will rebut the points mentioned by team A opening speaker. Then the fourth speaker is from for the team rebuttal speaker. He will rebut the points what mentioned by the team B opening speaker. Then the fifth speaker is the closing speaker from against team. He will summarize the his their team team's point of view. Then team A, the last speaker is from for the team team A. The summarize the closing speaker. He will summarize their his team's point of view. So this is the speech sequence. Then timing rules. So for uh, the opening speaker and rebuttal speaker, the green light, the, for opening speaker and rebuttal speaker, the speech time is three minutes. For the closing speaker, it is two minutes. So for opening speaker and rebuttal speaker, green light will appear at two minutes. Yellow light will appear at two minutes and 30 seconds. And red light will appear at three minutes. And grace time is 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, timer will clap after the grace time. In here, in online meeting, uh, the Zoom master will mute the speaker after 10 seconds. So no clapping during the speech. Of course, this is uh, this uh, rules are applicable for the physical meeting, but in online meeting, the Zoom master will mute the speaker after grace time of 10 seconds. Now, I think it's clear now the timing rules. So on what basis judges are marking you? The what is the judging criteria? Let us see. So. 70 percentage is based on the content and 30 percentage is based on delivery. 
let's see how it is being distributed throughout like 70 percentage content what does that mean debate content is distributed like 30 percentage for structure of the of your speech how the speech is organized how well the speech is organized and what are the supporting materials with which you support your arguments so 30 percentage is basically for that then value to audience whenever whatever you speak there has to be some believability that idea should be you know, easily digestible for the audience and the judges it should be a nice idea there has to be a logic conviction so that believability is very important how you propose that point how believable it is so all those things that uh, the the importance of that idea that logic everything put together it is a 20 percentage then effectiveness team coordination opening remarks rebuttal conclusions this, this is basically how well your team argued for your stand so the team coordination there there it comes actually how well your team presented that what was the team's chemistry everything can be easily understandable from uh, from the judges point of view or the from the audience so when uh, when your team members are speaking you should you know encourage and you should have you even your facial expressions can read how how much uh, conviction you have so that that is very important so that effectiveness is also very important so debate content 30 percentage for the structure organization supporting material then value to audience is 20 for ideas logic and believability then effectiveness team coordination is 20 percent is all put together it is 70 percentage then the delivery judging criteria for the delivery is 10 percentage for the volume you should be loud enough you should be your your uh, speech should, is uh, audible it should be audible it has to be flexible then the manner the directness and the enthusiasm how enthusiastically you are arguing your points so that is also important that is that counts for 10 percentage then your correctness of your language that grammar and pronunciation word selection etc it counts for 10 percentage so all these things put together it is 30 percentage so this is for the delivery now the debate contest process and pre preliminary round as i mentioned if you have more than for, for more than four teams, definitely you should have a preliminary round. So form pairs through draw lots. And it all up to the, uh, it's, it's a prerogative of the club how to form that uh, team. Assign debate topic through draw lots within with teams given three to five days to prepare. This is the normal, normal rule, but it's up to club. You can decide actually whether you have to give three to five days or you can, you, you can also give on the spot the topic even for the preliminary rounds it all depends upon the club's prerogative then draw lots for which team speaks for and against to you know which team will uh, speak against and which team will speak for so all this thing can be done by uh, draw uh, draw lo draw lots then teams have to nominate their speaking order who will speak the who will be the opening speaker who will be the rebuttal speaker and who will be the closing speaker that the team has to identify and inform well in advance so these are some special notes uh, for uh, we we should keep in our mind you know use soft words and hard arguments always uh, be very cool and calm and of course you have to be aggressive but you should not show that in your face maybe uh, don't go for very hard arguments. No any new points by rebuttal and closing speaker. You should not bring new points other than what your opponent speaker, opening speech, opening speaker has mentioned for the rebuttal. And the closing speaker also should not bring any new points from his own ideas rather than what his team's opening speaker and rebuttal speaker mentioned. Then use humor wherever is possible and wherever it is apt. And don't hurt anyone personally you are lost if you start hurting the opponent that means you have nothing in your arsenal see normally when when you will become very aggressive and uh, very loud hello uh, just a moment can you yeah can you see my uh, this thing uh, no, okay no. Yes, we can. okay no, your presentation is lost you need to reshare oh. it 
presentation is lost. Okay, right. I will. I will just uh, take again. Just a moment. Mm. Mm. I don't know, I'm unable to get the OK, just a moment. Yeah, got it. All right. OK, now you can see, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. OK, yes. so uh, use humor wherever is possible, but uh, don't hurt uh, anyone personally. Then the as I said, the team chemistry is very important. When you form your team, uh, all the team members should be in in tandem. They you know, you should you should be in a very good understanding and that is actually the most important thing in in the victory and i think uh, petrofac also knows this very well even uh, we used to have that team chem chemistry see every year we used to compete with the same team sometimes because we have that chemistry uh, last year and just before that so we always used to keep the same team that is that is the you know uh, it's a notion in our mind actually that we should have the same team so so team chemistry is very important because the opening speaker knows what is the response from the closing speaker and what is the response from the rebuttal speaker. So they will have a good chemistry and that will actually aid to uh, the, the winning part of it. Never use unparliamentary words. And this is also very important because in I remember in my, the, see when this uh, debate was started by Division P, uh, Anish John uh, division director. He was uh, Anish, Tosmas, Anish John was the division director, and uh, Tosmas Fine Khan was the area director at that time. When they started this debate in Division P, I think the first time uh, we, I was also a part of that Alnada Tosmas club, and I used one uh, unparliamentary word. Maybe it's it was I think it uh, it was nonsense. Uh, it at that time it was uh, very new to us actually from the aggressiveness that word came, but it. We should not use such unparliamentary words. You have to be very careful about that. So the pillars of uh, persuasion is nothing but ethos, the ethical appeal, and the pathos, the emotional appeal, and logos, the logical appeal. If you have a balance of all these three in your arguments, definitely you will be the winner. No doubt about it. So Petrofac debate champions 2021-2022 are going to be the next winner who are going to participate in ICDC. Wish you all the best and try to participate in this uh, debate. Uh, don't shy away from it. Maximum participation is very important. It's a fun. It's a very, really a fun. Uh, Toastmaster Fahim definitely knows about it. It's really a fun. Try to participate. Maximum numbers from your club. Go for preliminary rounds and then semi-finals and finals. It's really a fun. Uh, you will definitely enjoy it. So wish you all the best for the for your club debate and for the upcoming the ICDZ and division division uh, debates. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions now, I will I will try to answer for your queries. Actually. Yeah. Yes, Sunita, you can ask. Yeah, please. Hi, Vipin. No questions. Uh, I just had some comments. I think yeah. it was super, so brilliant. Uh, my first exposure actually to anything like this. I mean, I've heard about de debates and probably seen uh, it. 
but so many lovely rules behind it yeah. and what a structure. Uh, I, I, I think from my ignorance point of view, I just thought, you know, you just come up with anything and then you try to <laughs> argue your point. But yeah. this is so well structured. It's it's beautiful, brilliant. So yeah. kudos uh, to you and uh, Fahim and whoever else was on the committee who came up with it. Thank you so yeah. much. I, I think you should you should really congratulate Fahim because Fahim was the person uh, Fahim and Anish John was the person who built this rule uh, along with I think Ila Murugan and uh, Nimi. Yeah, if I if I'm not uh, if I if I remember correctly actually yeah. No, but really yeah. thanks and thanks for coming and uh, speaking to us about it. Yeah, it's it's my pleasure and thank you so much for uh, you know <laughs> inviting me for this session actually thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, next to Mohanad, yeah, you can ask. Yeah, I just want to say that um, these debates which you guys have made in, uh, in, in, in this part of the world is great. I met Toastmasters from other places in the world and they say this is something they've never seen and they never experienced uh, even in the last maybe some of them, maybe uh, more than 10 years, 20 years uh, Toastmasters, they've never seen this. So that this is really great because it's only this is only uh, local is here. Even the people who invent those masters, Americans, they never heard about this. And yeah. today I invited some of those uh, people from US and all, but they have some technical issue they couldn't attend and due to the time zone. But yeah. it's it's really, I mean, I really love what this uh, the, the debates and which we are organizing, and it's it's an enormous opportunity for all of us to participate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Farida, yeah. Yes, Farida, you can start. Um, hello, Vipin. Hi. Hi. Uh, I, I have one question regarding rebuttal speaker. I, yeah. So, uh, in basic word, a rebuttal speaker is person who support first speaker, correct? He, like, first uh, speaker told the one, two, three, and the rebuttal need to support this one, two, three with facts. Mm. Who is bringing this fact supporting uh, material? Not no, no, fact supporting me, facts and figures. Uh, the opting speaker has to support his points. See, the rebuttal speaker is actually speaking against the opposition team's opening speaker. Say, for example, mm. team B's opening speaker, team A's rebuttal is rebutting. You got the point? See, all the facts and figures and the arguments are supported by the opening speakers. It's the opening speaker's job to support the arguments. Rebuttal mm -hmm. speaker has to rebut the points what his opponent opening speaker has mentioned. Uh, like to say something opposite that he's exactly view exactly. Is not so correct. basically rebuttal speaker is more more focused towards the other teams that is uh. his opponent team's points. See rebuttal speaker should keep in mind that okay what he will speak. He should imagine or he should assume what are the points he might bring. Then he should make he should be ready with the uh, counterpoints. How to counter his opponent team's opening speaker? Mm -hmm. So that is very important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the um, uh, during uh, the so you are you are you are conducting any demo meet actually. I think it will be very helpful uh, for him. Uh, I think there are new people, new members also, right? Those who have not seen this uh, debate for us. Yeah, the yes, plan sir. is uh, we are planning to conduct an internal debate on uh, 16th of October. Very good, very good. Very good. Uh, yeah. So at that time we are uh, nominating two teams to make uh, make their try try out. Yeah, and we then are nominating is... some mentors also so that they yeah. can prepare themselves uh, prior to. Correct, correct. correct. Mm -hmm. Then it will be very very helpful actually. Then it is easy to understand how exactly it is being done. Yeah, uh, and one one more thing, can I ask? Um, uh, look, topic when is supposed to be given topic during hmm. debate itself. People will know this is my topic or they have uh, time in advance like day in advance. No, advance. normally, normally, uh, normally in uh, in division contest, uh, we will have five to ten minutes. Some it all depends upon the contest mm. coordinators, but minimum ten minutes they will give for uh, the semifinals and finals. Normally for preliminaries, if in club contest, what they what we normally does is one week before we will get the topic so that you know the preliminary round will will be very very you know uh, active and very hot actually in the sense it will be very aggressive because you are getting that uh, the the topic uh, in advance so you can collect all the details facts and figures then it will be a very strong 
uh, game during the preliminary. But in semi-finals, as you said, uh, as I mentioned earlier, five to ten minutes before you will get the, and each team will get only before five to ten. That the team coordinators, the contest coordinators will ensure that. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Next, Burman. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to share my experience of competing the debate at uh, divisional level. Uh, it was a uh, we were selected from a Petro Pack club. Yeah. And uh, we went to Emirates uh, Auditorium. And yeah. okay, uh, what I felt was that Mohanad was my team member and another person who is, who is not in the forum today. So we we were selected, but what we lacked was that the practice. Yeah, I realized because when we went to the stage half the battle, I lost to be honest. I yeah. was very much confused with the environment and ambience. Yeah. Fahim was there in the meeting because I was trying to look at Fahim to have some confidence in me. And uh, Emmet yeah. was also there. Yeah. Okay, but uh, uh, so that is more important because uh, if we do, even though if we went in the club and if we continue to debate on the topics, different topics, Correct. it will boost our uh, confidence. Confidence, so yes. That's what, uh, we thought that we had a very good. Uh, opening and finally we could not do the rebuttal good and uh, yeah. so that that there we lost it the yeah. uh, battle Otherwise, uh, it's like it's, it's like, it's like cycling yeah yeah it is like cycling you should so you should have a balance with your team members and uh, that is the reason why i mentioned uh, one week before you should have a strategic planning actually among your uh, team members that's very team chemistry is very important See, if you suddenly one person comes, they should know that how you are responding to a point. So you 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 know how your partner is. So that is very important. Yeah, That's, thank you. Yes, Fahim. Yeah, you can. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thanks to Vipin. I know he's extremely, extremely busy person managing so many companies, running restaurants. So thank you so much, Vipin, for joining <coughs> us in the morning. Uh, I just want to add a couple of points to the team. What uh, it was very good experience we've been because you have that rich experience participating in so many contests and coming from your personal experience that what we should look for. Uh, with the team, I just want to do two, three points. Every year we are evolving in terms of the rules because we, we learn every year that what went wrong last year and division team tried to implement uh, that through the rules. So Vipin has covered all the basics. But that should not stop you in the reading the rule book, latest rule book, whatever you receive from the division. That's number one. And number two, uh, as Vipin has also mentioned in his the remarks, that whatever he's sharing is mostly for the uh, in-person contest. But like last year, we had the online Zoom contest, and most likely this year might also happen the same thing. And there, there will be a slight change in the rule in terms of the how, what should the proceeding and some some guidelines? So please, please make sure that you are reading the latest rule book. <laughs> you are very, very much well versed with this. And I just want to share one more, one more experience in terms of the uh, unparliamentary language. <laughs> uh, the year I was become the division director, uh, we had a new uh, club in my division, and that division was the ICDC contest winner in the other division. And they were the most favorite team for that year for the division contest. And the team had the great chemistry, what Vipin uh, has mentioned. They were oozing with the confidence and they were so lucky. They had the most weakest team against them. So imagine the equation now. They had the weakest team and the strongest team and they were oozing with the confidence. However, what they did, they used some unparliamentary language. Though they were also my favorite, but I was not able to support them when they violated the rule and they were disqualified. So please make sure do not use unparliamentary language, whatever it comes. And once again, thank you so much, Vipin, for joining us today. It is always great learning, hearing from you and your experience. And please keep coming, uh, Vipin. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Fahim Thank you. and Satish and everyone. Everyone, yeah, especially thanks to Petrofac for uh, inviting me. Thank you so much, and uh, I will be in in, in touch with you in future as well. Thank you. Okay. Last word, uh, Jacob. Want to say something quickly? 
Yes, I have so many people warning me for, to ask only a short question. I don't have any questions. I just want to thank you for accepting our invitation and come here and uh, do a presentation, a wonderful presentation. Actually, your presentation is already having the QA session itself. Your lot of experience, you already put it there so that what, is, what can go wrong also already mentioned that. Thank you very much for giving us a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Tosmos and Jacob. Thanks thank a lot. You, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Really, thank you. really um, wonderful visits. Thank you, DTM, Vibin Divakar, for this Gems 2 notes. Uh, for the team members, I put in the chat uh, I put in the chat box the uh, the two team formation. So please uh, start working uh, as a group, form your own WhatsApp groups, uh, start communicating with each other, start putting techniques. Uh, by the end of the meeting, I'll put the topic which you have to prepare for the next two weeks. We have the competitions coming next meeting on 16 October, our internal debate. So I'll put the topic at the end, end of the meeting. But this is a Teams. You need to start coordinating working. Maybe you need to, day, to meet uh, two, three times, four times for rehearsal. And there's one mentor who can help you to check your script, to check your to check your techniques, maybe some rehearsals, you can do it in front of our mentors. OK, so the, it's there in the chat box, the teams. Now I would like that we had a, one new guest. He coming from an international club. He's from Kenya, I believe. Please unmute yourself, introduce yourself in brief. <coughs> yes, Toastmaster Lee. Uh, good morning, everyone from Nairobi. Salam alaikum. Bonjour. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So my name is Ali Kanyago. I'm joining you from Nairobi, Kenya. Nairobi, Kenya is actually on the east, eastern African side of Africa. Uh, I belong to a club called SEMA in Nairobi. Uh, we are currently in uh, District 114. Uh, I've been invited to this meeting by one of uh, very good friends, uh, Toastmaster Mohammed Bamal. I've actually been uh, physically to your club, uh, in fact, to see a contest. Uh, and it was very, very exciting and uh, insightful because Eventually, what I gathered in that contest uh, helped me to go and win the evaluation, the district evaluation contest back in uh, in East Africa. Yeah. So I'm back again, uh, this time uh, hopefully to, to, to engage on a long term uh, partnership. Uh, today I'm here alone, but going forward, I'll invite a few of my club members to, to come and join in. Uh, as we look forward to to reap from uh, insights of uh, of the club uh, knowledge management. So thank you again. I'm looking forward for an interesting and productive meeting. Lovely. Thanks you. Thanks for joining uh, our meeting today and visiting. Our club is going globally. We are having people from Canada, from from uh, US, from India, and soon we'll get some people from Australia and different other countries. We are going globally and our communication to Petrofag Global Offices, it's on the table, it will be issued very soon. And I would like now to uh, to introduce our Toastmaster of the day. He's a versatile, he's slow, but steady. Slow, but steady person. Looking at opportunities and networking with people with diverse national nationality, cultures, and different aim. And he would love to travel and in, in order to finish one takeaway, which he can implement it for his own self improvement and paving the path for the new potential business opportunity. Let's all welcome our Toastmaster Mohammadi Abbas Parmal. Please give him great applause. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Mohammad, for the uh, great introduction. Okay, I am doing this TMOD rule. After a long, long time, I don't remember the last time also. Thanks for uh, this opportunity. Uh, I would like to start uh, and uh, good morning to everybody, to our mentors and the people who have uh, helped us throughout the journey. Although my journey is going up and down, in, even in the Petrofac Postmasters Club, but now I'm trying to be consistent. 
I would like to start uh, with my favorite topic and the theme of the day, modern pre dudes. I'll just share a presentation. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes, yes, it's visible. OK. I, I, I would like to go with uh, one question thrown to everybody. In this last two years, this uh, modern pandemic, which we are part of the journey, how many of us thought that we will be doing something of our own? Can you tell me? Anybody who has thought that, OK, we are in the so much of, because the people who are outside the club doubt they realize that if they had started, maybe when they were at the peak, when we did not have financial constraint, we could have invested 5,000 dirhams in something, investing in a license or working with somebody else. It would be a better option because I've seen so many friends of mine and colleagues of mine who, who took that initiative. OK, it was not paving anything, but when they got a jolt in the job, they had a second board to write up and they just took that initiative. OK, it's not a easy to get into a new thing all of a sudden, but it is a thing. So my advice is that learning from my experience and the few of our colleagues experience, let's plan B and do something of our own. And this country provides you a lot of opportunities. It's not like that uh, we have to go outside. We can work with a lot of ease in this country to start with something. I'm just putting in the, uh, the uh, volume of uh, trades which have grown exponentially from 1950s. The, when they, what we say, the real industrial evolution started when people got settled with the World War II and everything. It has grown over about 300 times. And it is, see, you can see the chart. It is now the trade throughout the world is around $18,000 billion. And which are, these are the main countries. If you see the countries, which are the main exporting and importing countries. Exports, as we all know, China is a dominant player and the biggest importer in the world is the United States. So we will think that US is the biggest exporter. No, it is the biggest importer in the world. And in this uh, slides, India doesn't play any role as of now, but the way in which is coming up, the way in which is growing, we expect to see India in this pie chart by 2030s. How this uh, modern trades route uh, evolved? Because it was a need of that time and to connect with the places where the commerce, uh, there, was a, there was a source of uh, requirement, there was a source of uh, produce, and the people came to know that we need this. For example, salt. When the people st uh, started getting benefit of that, uh, it is an antiseptic and this and everything, the people started trading for the salt. And once it was a barter item for uh, getting the commodities throughout the world. And salt and spices are the key ing ingredients which kicked off the trade route of ancient world also. I'll just go through quickly to how the trade routes evolved throughout the phase of the time. In the ancient times, when people started uh, using horses and they started uh, uh, using them as a pet, then they started moving different between the different places. That was around 3700 BC. And at the time, the focus of the world was Asian countries because at that time, US was not there, Australia, Antarctica, and all these countries were uh, virgin uh, lands for the people. 
because this country has had all long history, Asian countries, India, China, and all these things. So it's obvious that it started with that. And the classical, we all know, everybody might be knowing that there was famous Silk Road, which was established by one of the Chinese uh, dynasties and why. And you can see the route, how it involved for the trading. It covered uh, Central Asia, uh, Middle East, North Africa, and up to the Europe. And it evolved in the medieval times when the Islamic uh, conquest in Persia and Central Asia started, people started evolving with the new civilizations. And uh, it was a, a rise of Mughals, which was the greatest, uh, uh, Genghis Khan was the greatest conqueror of all times. He has established the dynasty from China up to the Europe. And obviously with this, his conquest, his in intention was to do the trade and annex the most uh, rich uh, region of the world. Now to continue with our uh, uh, proceedings of the day, I would uh, introduce my silent role players. The first uh, role player is uh, I would invite uh, uh, because they are my partners in the journey uh, today. First role player is Timer Toastmaster Kirana. Kirana, uh, would you please explain your role and how you will uh, uh, explain to the people how you are going to show the timer, timing and everything? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Toastmaster meeting number 261. Uh, today I'm going to play as a timer. Uh, my role is to uh, note down the time taken by each and every speaker and uh, notify the time limit. Uh, as, I, as, as it said, as he has he said by Mr. Vipin, uh, there are three set of time limits. One is qualification time, and then another one is safe zone time, another one is dangerous. Well, uh, each and every speaker, uh, when you every speech, there has a whole set of timings. Once person reached the target or minimum requirement of uh, timing time duration, I'll show as a green color like uh, like like this way. I'm going to show this background. I hope everyone can see. And then. Uh, once a person reached the target timings and very near to a danger zone, I'm going to show a yellow color uh, in the background. And then once uh, reached the maximum time limit, I'm going to show a red uh, color in my background. It means that uh, you have crossed the uh, maximum time limit and you have only 10 seconds or maybe a 15, grace, uh, 15 second of grace timing for a particular speech. That means it, it the green uh, color, it shows that you have to stop immediately. Uh, at the end of the session, or maybe when it is required or as it required by uh, TMOD, I'm going to report my time uh, report to Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim. Uh, this is my role. Uh, thank you and uh, over to TMOD. Kirana, just one uh, clarification. I thought grace time was 30 seconds. Yes, Kirana. Grace time is 30 okay. seconds. I think you reverse the colors. Uh, when you reach the minimum, it should be green. Uh, in the mid is yellow. And uh, when you reach the maximum, it is uh, red. OK? Yes. OK, yeah, thank you. OK, uh, now I call my second business partner. That is Grammarian and our counter, Toastmaster Manoranjan Paul. Manoranjan, can you explain your role? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, my role in this meeting would be I will be uh, checking the grammarian and the R counter and I am going to uh, check the languages used by the all the speakers and I will be checking the outstanding words if uh, uh, a speaker is using that I will be highlighting at the end of the session. I also uh, will check the R counter if anybody is uh, using the you know repeated word uh, in so uh, any kind of uh, uh, word using the repeatedly so that I will be monitoring and at the end of the meeting I am going to give my report uh, to the all the all the uh, speaker and the viewers in this meeting. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Manoranjan. My third business partner is uh, Wordmaster, Toastmaster Ravi Upadhyay. Ravi, can you explain your role and introduce the word of the day? Mr. Tijan Modi, uh, my dear fellow Toastmasters and guests, a very good morning to all of you. Morning. I'm very pleased to be the word master of this meeting. Now, let me introduce the word uh, of the day. It's ameliorate. Ameliorate means to make or become better or to improve. I have chosen a simple word actually, but you know. So uh, the, the verb, verb forms are like ameliorated, ameliorating, and there are like noun and objective, uh, adjective forms, amelioration, ameliorative, ameliorator, ameliorary. So I'll post this uh, word of the day in the chat box. So the example uh, of this word are, uh, I'll give you one or two examples. So during ancient times, the Silk Road greatly ameliorated the trade amongst the East and uh, Far East and European countries. Another example is the UAE government has uh, come up with a new road proposal between Sharjah and UAE to ameliorate the effects of uh, traffic. Uh, one small uh, clarification here. The word ameliorate is often wrongly used where ele alleviate is meant. So there is a small difference bet between the words alleviate and uh, ameliorate. So ameliorate is, the, uh, 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 is properly used to mean improve, not to make easier to wear. So uh, one should talk about alleviating the pain or hardship, not ameliorating it. So alleviate the pain is uh, uh, to make easier to wear, right? Anyway, so each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day at least once. I'll be counting uh, how many uh, times you use this word of the day and provide my report at the end of the uh, meeting. I'm posting this word in the chat box, as I said, and uh, thank you very much. Over to GMOD. Thank you, Ravi. Now coming to uh, introduce our mentor of the club, Madam Toastmaster Deepa. She has ameliorated our potential when we were struggling at the time last year and brought all the energy in the club along with uh, 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 another mentor, uh, Michael. So, Madam, uh, I would like to request you your role uh, to explain to all of us. Thank you so much, Tio Modi. It's my pleasure to be your uh, general evaluator today. Uh, it is important to have a general evaluator for the simple reason that you test the health of your club meetings, of your sessions, and how well you do from start to finish. So it is my pleasure to be here, and uh, uh, it's 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 always a learning lesson for me as well when I sit with you all because I know how to improve and uh, how to do better in terms of uh, uh, conducting meetings and uh, also to give you all recommendations based on my past learnings. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now let's continue to the most interesting session of uh, the Toastmaster meeting. That is the prepared species, speeches. And uh, I would like to uh, introduce there are two speakers today and two evaluators for them. So first uh, speaker will be uh, Jatan Shu, who is a passionate engineering uh, in engineering. And as we heard that he has recently now moved to Canada to explore new opportunities. And his area of interest is or what opportunities he would like to do when he is trying his self-employment is anything which adds value do it, anything. So that is a thing. And he will be evaluated by our uh, own Mr. Kuddus. He is calm, passionate, and has evolved a lot. So over to Mr. Kuddus to explain the evaluation guideline and uh, start. Uh, you are muted actually. My apologies. I mean, good morning uh, to you all. Today uh, I will be putting a, uh, Mr. J. Tansu 
Chawla. He is making a project speech, and the topic is climate change as a hoax. I will be listening and evaluating for his speech and try to put a what went good, what can be improved, so that this can be and and it is a second speech. So also looking into the possibilities what has been input uh, feedback given in the first one has been taken care of so over to you with good luck to mr jatanshu thank you uh, thank you mr pidos uh, thank you uh, fellow toastmaster so as we know today the world is split uh, today the world it's i can't see the time screen please So don't you need to pin the timer, Kirana? Can you able to do it? No. Anyway, I'm not noting down the timing. You can start. Uh, we are adding in the spotlight. OK, as we all know, today the world is uh, split between those who want vaccine to be mandatory versus those who believe it's a violation of their right. Similarly, the world is split between those who consider climate change to be real versus those who consider it to be a hoax. So in the year 2019, Greta Thunderbird uh, made an impassionate speech to the United Nations about, about the, uh, her fears of climate emergency. On the same day, a group of 500, 500 prominent uh, scientists and professionals led by clientele, which is a climate intelligence, is an independent foundation that operates in the field of climate change and climate policy. Uh, Co-founder Gus uh, Burkett sent a registered letter to the United Nations Secretary General stating that there is no climate emergency and climate policy should be designed to benefit the lives of people. Some So on the, that letter, he stated out seven points. Those, uh, so some of those specific points which he highlighted in letters were first, nature as well as anthropogenic factors that causes uh, warming. So the geological archive revealed that Earth climate has varied, uh, has varied as long as the planet has existed with natural cold and warm phases. The little ice age ended as recent as 1850. So therefore now it's no surprise that we're experiencing a period of warming. Second is in that letter he pointed out that warming is far slower than predicted. So, uh, so he said the world has warmed uh, at less at less than initially predicted rate, and at about less than half the rate expected based on the net anthropogenic forcing and radiative imbalance. It also told tell us that the uh, that that we have far we are far from understood the climate changes. Uh, which was explained by Nobel laureates uh, Ivar Gevar on climate change that first of all, we need to ask ourselves what is the optimal temperature for Earth? Without the atmosphere, the Earth would be roughly 35 degrees colder from uh, uh, from what it is. And uh, in, so last 100 years, 1898 to 1998, the temperature increased by 0.8 degree and CO2 concentration increased from 295 ppm to uh, 367, so which is a 72 ppm, and uh, CO2 has increased from 367 to 403 uh, ppm since 1988. So this just goes to show that uh, in 100 years, uh, 100 years, uh, 36 degree uh, uh, ppm has increased, which should be a half of what was in previous 100 years. So our model is not stable to prove that uh, COT is a significant climate gas. Number three is that climate policy relies on inadequate models. And again, again, this has been exaggerated by the, uh, the effects of uh, greenhouse gases such as CO2, which, which is in fact a, a gas which is uh, not a pollutant, which is a point number four states, and rather a plant food that is essential to all life on Earth such as for photosynthesis, which is a blessing. More CO2 is beneficial for nature, for greening the earth. Uh, additional CO2 in the air has uh, promoted growth in global plant biomass. It is also suitable for agriculture and increases crop worldwide, which will help feed our uh, increasing population. 
So scientists Dyson hence disagreed with the scientific concession on climate change. He believed that some of the effects of increased CO2 levels are favorable and does not take into, into account uh, factors such as agricultural yield and other C and it, CO2 positive benefits likely outweigh the adverse effect. He was skeptical about the simulation model used to predict climate change, arguing that a political effort to reduce cause of climate change distract from other global uh, problems that should take priority. Hence, he also signed the World Climate Declaration entitled that there is no climate emergency. The fifth point in the letter talks about global warming has not increased the natural disasters. So, uh, so where is, there is no statistical evidence that uh, global warming is intens intensifying hurricanes, floods, droughts, and such like natural disaster or making them more frequent. However, CO2 mitigation measures are damaging as they are costly. For instance, wind turbine kills bird, palm oil plant plantation diverse the biodiversity of the rainforest. And we have noticed in the really recent that carbon capture plant, which was built in Iceland, captures a year carbon equivalent uh, captures in a year carbon equivalent to what is generated in three seconds in the world through emission. So it's costly, but not an efficient solution. Climate policy must respect scientific and economical reality. They should not just be based on panic and alarm, whereas they should have, we should strongly oppose the harmful and unrealistic net zero CO2 policy proposed for 2050. If, if approaches emerge, we will have ample time to reflect and adapt. The aim of international policy should be to provide reliable and affordable uh, energy at all time throughout the world. And that means then, then that means yes, looking into renewable, not just for climate change, but for more affordability so that we can reach even the developing nations. Same thing was mentioned by Danish scientist uh, Bojan uh, Lamborg in his think tank, uh, who's, a, who's a president of think tank and uh, at the uh, Copenhagen Census, uh, Consensus Center. He said, and he, he's been the member of the EIA, Environmental Assessment Institute in Copenhagen. He can become an internationally known best-selling uh, for his controversial book, The Skeptical Environmentalist. He argues that many of the costly measures and action adopted by scientists and policymakers to meet the challenge of global warming, global warming will ultimately have minimum impact on the world rising temperature. Last point. There is last but not least, there is no climate emergency. Therefore, there is no cause for panic. We need to build a consensus. We need to set. We need to have a settled science about climate change. We always hear about there is a consensus when there is a global network of more than 500 knowledgeable and experienced scientists and professional in climate and related field who are challenging this settled science. One of them is uh, Japanese IPCC scientists such as Kim Nori Ito who has stated in his uh, six point solution to his global warming and has also said in his book, uh, uh, in his new, uh, in his book, Books of Lies and Trap, he states that global warming is the worst scientific scandal. So to conclude, unfortunately, newspaper don't give up the, uh, the sort of counter argument that the space they deserve an integrating illusion of that is the Alan Carter report that was not published by EPA and that result is Heard become convinced the only argument they get exposed to are valid. Thank you. Oh, now coming to the second speaker. Madam Toastmaster uh, Sonita Julius. She is from Tamil Nadu. She is uh, likes Kanchipuram silk saris. And she, her passion is to play is to piano for uses. And his evaluator is. I don't know if there's an echo. There's an echo. And his evaluator is. There's an echo sound. Meeting a meeting. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, I'm muting everyone else. Uh, yeah, 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 because I'm getting a lot of echo. Yeah, now it's fine. Now it's clear. Yeah, now it's clear. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he will be evaluated. Uh, she will be evaluated by our uh, master of comedies and our most senior most member, Jacob John. Over to uh, Jacob to read the evaluation guidelines for Madam Toastmaster Sunita. 
Thank you, Toastmaster Mohamedi. Today, I will be evaluating the speech of Madam Toastmaster Sunita Julius. She was she is attempting her level one innovative planning speech, which is on researching and presentation. And the topic she has selected is a piano. Uh, the time allocated is uh, five to seven minutes. The uh, purpose of this speech is basically research and present. And you can come with any topic, humorous or informational or any topic you like. And again, I repeat, the time allocated is five to seven minutes. All the best to you. Thank you. Um, before I start, can I uh, share my screen? Yes. Just uh, let me know when you can see it. Is it uh, visible? The presentation? Yes, 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 yes. OK, so, thank you. What has keys yet cannot unlock the beauty that? Cannot hear the beauty that it unlocks. It's a piano. Sorry, sorry, sir. I'm going to stop. Can you see my face or just the presentation? Because I need you to see both. Because I can only see my presentation. So now can you that's see fine, both or can you see just the presentation? No, we can no, see we both. Can see both. Oh, you can see both. All right. So I'll leave it on this one. Sorry. Oh, can I start oh. again? Yeah, OK. Yeah, okay. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah reset yeah, the right. timing. Yeah. Kirana, yeah. can you restart? Thanks. Can switch, can switch start. What has keys but can't hear the beauty that it unlocks? It's a piano. That's a quote by Gerard Kins. Good morning, guests and fellow Toastmasters. Today, the topic of my research is going to be on the piano. Now, I'm sure all of us like music of some sort, whether it's vocals only, instrumental only, or vocals and instruments. Now, the piano it belongs to the family of a stringed instrument. What is a stringed instrument? Well, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, a stringed instrument is any instrument which produces sound on the vibration of stretched strings. And more often than not, this is amplified by a resonating chamber. So let's look at some ways how sound can be produced on a stretched string. It can be plucked. In the case of a guitar or a sitar, and the sound here is amplified by this hollow chamber. The strings can be struck. In the case of a piano, now when we hit the keys on the keyboard, that initiates this little hammer, which is made out of felt, strikes the stretched string and produces a sound. This sound is transmitted to a soundboard, which amplifies the sound. The third way to produce a sound is when the strings are bowed, like in the case of a violin. It's called a bowed instrument because the stick that is used on the violin is called a bow and it has horse hairs on it. Now the piano, as you can see on the screen, it is a keyboard, basically keys on a board. And this has 88 keys. All these white notes and black notes together is 88 keys. It's a total of seven and a half octaves. One octave is eight notes. So if you follow me on the screen, this uh, where the cursor is, this is the middle C. Why middle C? Because it's actually in the middle of the piano. So from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's eight notes. Or in Hindi, that's sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, mi, sa. In Western music, that's do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Now, Yamaha are producers of piano and they've been producing it for years. It's a Japanese company. So according to them, the first piano was created in 1720 by a person called Bartholomew Christofori. So what was unique about this was he removed the plucking mechanism. Before the piano, there was an instrument called the harpsichord. 
which is the same keys on a board. I want you to imagine the sound that comes when you pluck a guitar, the same sound coming from a keyboard. Now, this sound was difficult to manage. So hence, Mr. Christofori removed the plucking mechanism in this keyboard and introduced the striking mechanism, which we saw in the previous slide. Now, this created soft and loud tones. So this was an amelioration to the harpsichord. So soft and loud, it was actually called piano forte, meaning soft, loud in Italian. So finally, it was called the piano. Square piano is something that was used in domestic settings. In the year 1767, it was created by Johann Christoph. Speaking of domestic settings, I play the piano and my parents put me in piano lessons back when I was very small. Uh, I didn't even know whether I wanted to learn music or not. I remember that uh, I would love hearing my music teacher play the piano or anybody else who knew how to play the piano well. But when it came to me, I found it so difficult to practice, especially the left hand was difficult to coordinate. OK. Then came the upright piano or the giraffe style piano. Why the giraffe style? It actually looks like a giraffe from the photo. This was created in 1820 by a person called Gebrodinus Mueller. What was unique about this? It's the vertical soundboard. Here, the soundboard is vertical as opposed to the horizontal one on a grand piano. So this took a lot less space. Famous piano players and composers are Johann Sebastian Bach, who lived from 1685 to 1750. Then we have Domenico Scarlatti from 1685 to 1757. Then we have Joseph Hayden from 1732 to 1809. We have Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who lived from 1756 to 1791. Ludwig van Beethoven, who lived from 1770 to 1827. Now, what is unique about all of them is that they all lived around the same era when the piano was created, which was in 1720. And all these people were famous uh, play, piano players. They composed uh, lots of symphonies and till date, a lot of their music is still played in piano exams. All our uh, pieces are also pieces which were created by some of these musicians and composers who lived back then. So finally, I would like to leave you with a piece by Mozart. It's called Symphony Number no. 40. Not the whole piece, just an excerpt. And I want to enjoy. Let me just play it for you. Thank you. Thank you. One minute. It's playing. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Sunita. Thank you. Now we will have uh, asked for the timer report. And uh, oh. yeah, uh, both the speakers are qualified. Uh, first speaker, Mr. Jatanshu, has taken uh, seven minutes, 23, 25 seconds. And uh, second speaker, Miss Ms. Sunita, has, she has taken uh, six minutes, uh, 30 seconds, somewhere around. Thank you. Uh, I would request uh, Satish to put the voting link. Uh, and uh, all the Toastmasters can vote. The voting link is put. Uh, all Toastmasters can. Okay. I would uh, quickly go into the content of my presentation. I was just describing how the trade routes evolved. So now coming to the early modern times, and we know many of the names from our generation, these are the famous people. 
in uh, 1492, uh, Christopher Columbus set a sail for spice exploration towards east of the world, but he landed and discovered America. And you, as you can see the picture, many of the things which were uh, uh, old world, what we say is uh, ancient uh, Europe or uh, Asia, he introduced uh, to US and he brought in many of the things from uh, US. And uh, we know all about uh, Vasco da Gama. He discovered the route from uh, Portugal to India, and he was welcomed by King Zamorin in uh, Kerala. And that started the Portuguese involvement uh, in India and the spice trade, which went up to the European uh, peninsula. Then this during this uh, stage, lot of slaves were taken because US was invited and they invited uh, they needed the people to do the farming. So many were uh, slavery started in a big way and people were taken from Africa to work in the fields in the US. And uh, the famous uh, Dutch East India Company was formed in 1602. I, I visited the headquarters of that. It was like a, we were just moving in Amsterdam and the guy told that being Indian, they told you know which where you are standing. It was it is in the Amsterdam University and it is the administrative block of Amsterdam University, which was the headquarter of this Dutch East India Company. So at the at, in this 1600, uh, the turnover of that company was cumulative of equivalent GDP of India, China, and many of the East Asian countries. We were overwhelmed by the volume they were doing the trade. Then comes the post World War when everything got settled and the people started thinking on a scientific way of doing the business. In 47, uh, 23 countries signed an agreement of uh, general agreements of tariffs and trades. ISO standard uh, containerization uh, standards. And in first, everyone know on 1st of January uh, 1994, we all know WTO, World Trade Organization, was formed and it was formed in 1995. It was too late, but people started that if we want to grow, we have to collaborate and do the things. And modern, there are certain modern initiatives. Uh, in 1st January 2003, Euro, Euro was launched, which was which is the second largest uh, currency after the US dollars. And the European countries got together to have a uh, trade block. And recently, in recent times, we see 2013, China has begun the new Silk Road, what we see, Belt and Road Initiative, which is connecting many of the Asian countries, although there are a lot of oppositions and this, and people are afraid bit also. In India, 2014, new BJP government launched Make in India initiative. And uh, what uh, now during my recent tour of uh, Africa, majority of African countries are, have realized that they have been exploited for a long time. So now they have started man, uh, de, uh, manufacturing in a big way because they are rich in natural resources to have, have a less dependency on the other countries. So these are the modern uh, trade initiatives. Uh, just uh, you, uh, you, you can go through this side. What are the difference between the traditional trade and the modern trade? Traditional trade was up till 1950s. Now it's a modern trade concept. And we can, we uh, almost, when we people know that when the Suez Canal was blocked for a week, world lost $9.6 billion of trade. And it has shooted up the container priced, and still it is a big problem for all the traders. So if you want to be incrementally better, be competitive. But if you want to be exponentially better, be cooperative. I don't know how the people react on this, but only by mutual cooperation, people can grow. That is what the need of our. So uh, with this, I will end my presentation. And now I, I would like to introduce our stop the presentation. Uh, 
OK, uh, uh, now. Now coming to the impromptu speaking. Which is the most exciting part of the any speech and it gives a chance to everybody to speak up what's in that heart. It will be led by our. Charismatic. Mentor of the club Fahim Khan. He's from uh, Banaras in India. And his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, interest are a stand up comedy and a mind valley quest. And if he, if he wants to go into business, he is not thought of. He would trade in the business of silk and tiles. Over to uh, Toastmaster Fahim to conduct the Toastmaster uh, uh, table topic se session. Best of luck. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Mohammadi. <laughs> Once again, good morning, everyone. And as Mohammadi said, welcome to the most exciting part of a Toastmasters meeting, which is table topic session. As our DTM Vipin just mentioned, by participating in the debate, you improved in impromptu speaking. But I would say, by participating in table topic session, you improve your debating skills. I strongly urge each one of you to please take this opportunity and including the guests and participate in this session. However, since we are running late, I had prepared eight topics, but we'll go only for four. The timing is minimum one minute you have to speak and maximum two minutes, and then we have a 30 second grace period to conclude. Once again, I strongly recommend in order to ameliorate your debating skill, please come forward and take this opportunity. So first I'll invite one of the Toastmasters to take up the lead. If nobody is raising their hand, then I'll pick from my side. Since we are running late, so let allow me to pick. So my first participant would be Toastmaster Satish Devan. Satish, are you ready? Yes. Fantastic. Let me see if you're able to see my screen. Is my screen visible? We should be a yes, PPT. Yes. yes, yes, I can. Fantastic. As I mentioned to us, Master Satish, I had prepared eight topics, but we'll go for four. But anyway, you can pick any one of them to us, Master Satish. All right, I'll select number two. Number two, fantastic. Looks like two is your lucky number. Here it goes to us, Master Satish, and your topic is, if you can pick only one, which one method will you choose for trading and why? Historical information, market forecast, or gut feeling? I repeat, if you can pick only one, which one method will be you choose for trading and why? Historical information, market forecast, or gut feeling? Over to you, to Smart Sapish. Right. Thank you. Thank you. A very tricky question for me. I don't know how I'm going to fare here, but to me, uh, since the first uh, option given is historical information and being a fanatic of uh, historical information myself, because I love history in my in my uh, earlier days, earlier school years, history is one of my favorite topics. And the way that is mainly attributed to the teacher who had taught me the history, uh, the history lessons. She used to narrate the uh, stories, uh, narrate, narrate the historical events in a way of uh, conducting, I mean, as if telling a story, especially the Russian Revolution, the World War One and Two. So coming back to the topic of topic that I've been given, I'm not a master in the trades and I've I have very zero knowledge about business and other things. But since uh, the option is given to me, <laughs> which is my option, and I am not bothered about uh, what my advice is going to end up for the end user, <laughs> I will choose the historical information. That is mainly because I love history. And secondly, historical information always tend to lead the uh, trend towards the future. Uh, you need to travel for anything. You need to follow the trend. So the trend comes from the history, right? So historical trend always helps you to follow the trend and uh, guess the path in the future. So my option will go to historical information. Go to your TT master. Thank you so much, Toast Master Satish. Indeed, the historical information emulate the quality of our decision. For the 
next speaker do we have any hands raised because i can see only my presentation not the hand Pravish. anybody there jatanshu jatanshu yes jatanshu okay since uh, uh, if i have to given a choice let me pick toastmaster ravi first toastmaster ravi you are able to see my screen toastmaster ravi good morning good morning and yes good morning is this screen visible to you toastmaster yes. ravi yes 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 screen is visible please go ahead and select topic number 1 topic, topic number 1 one. One. fantastic toastmaster ravi your topic is how will you explain the concept of pedding to a 5 years old kid how will you explain the concept of trading to a 5 years old kid over to you to us master ravi uh, yes the uh, the topic is simple but uh, somewhat tricky no problem uh, the first thing the 5 year old uh, he doesn't uh, he or she doesn't understand really what is trading she only know he or she only knows how to you know uh, uh, get things by you know uh, either by crying i mean either, either by requesting if it doesn't uh, happen then by crying or something right so he doesn't know what is trading so first of all we have to uh, uh, make them understand what is trading so for example if, if uh, for example okay if you uh, if you do the uh, you know uh, if you do this particular small, simple work i will uh, give you this basically this is a trade a small trade this is, this is how they will learn uh, you know so so basically trade is nothing but uh, exchange of goods or services uh, you know so so the the person who uh, the, 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 uh, uh, i give some uh, good or services in exchange of the uh, services or goods uh, rendered by the other person so th this is the concept which we have to teach them so basically uh, uh, we will start for a 5 year old he cannot he doesn't have really something to uh, big to offer to us so what we will do is uh, uh, you know uh, when they are uh, um, adamant for, or to, to get something or some uh, this thing we will try to uh, tell them okay uh, i will give it to you uh, this to you <laughs> it may be a toy or whatever but uh, for this you have to uh, be, uh, you know for example behave properly for at least for next one hour or whatever it may be like so so th this is a, a small uh, th this is the basic uh, uh, concept of trade which they will start learning give and take basically uh, that's all from my side thank you so much toastmaster ravi indeed we this is only the give and take trading is very simple give and take i uh, just a small recommendation to to next to its speakers please try to use word of the day ameliorate in your speech uh and before coming just uh, lee uh, yes yes that, that that's what my next is probable speaker can we have the toastmaster guest coming forward please toastmaster lee is it okay if you want to take the next topic uh, yeah sure let me give it a try <laughs> fantastic i'll share my screen again and please go ahead and select your topic number topic number 8 topic number 8 fantastic okay just masterly your topic is trading effectively is about assessing probabilities not certainties trading well, effectively is about assessing probabilities not certainties over to you just masterly trading effectively is about assessing probabilities uh, not uh, certainties uh let me give a good example of uh, foreign exchange uh, we all like to put our money into foreign currencies dollar the sterling pound the kenyan shilling the rupee and a lot of these currencies normally fluctuate based on uh, the world political stability if 
if there's anything happening, probably like what we see in Afghanistan, it affects the dollar. Yeah. So this is a very good case of certainty. Uh, it is how it is how the it is the direction the it is direction the direction the economy is taking towards the future. Probability is more of a, a bet. It's it's more of a gamble. It is just projecting that uh, in one year the economy will grow by five percent. So there's a probability that uh, trade will also grow by five percent. I think the better case is normally to use certainty and not probability, because certainty is actually a very good reflection of what is happening on the ground. So I totally disagree with this statement. Uh, trading effectively is mainly more of a certainty and not probability. It's a tough one, but I hope I've given it the best. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Lee, for presenting your opinion very effectively and using the examples and relating probabilities with the gambling. Now, can we have the next speaker, Toastmaster Japanshu? Sure. Toastmaster Japanshu, we have used topic one, two, and eight. Give me seven. Okay. Fantastic. Toastmaster Jatanshu, for you, what is the most precious thing that you will never trade by anything? Toastmaster Jatanshu, for you, what is the most precious thing that you will never trade by anything? A little philosophical? Over to you, Toastmaster Jatanshu. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Fahim. And, uh... Again, good morning, fellow Toastmasters. So what is one thing that I wouldn't trade uh, the world for? You know, so that would for me would be my ethics, my integrity. Because what's a man without his ethics, without his integrity? And that's something I need to credit Petrofac as well. For, for them, they have ingrained this value in us as someone who joined here as a graduate trainee. This was among, I remember as one of the, the second value they taught after safety, they taught us to be ethical. And I believe that, uh, you know, uh, people to, uh, being, un, uh, you can think that uh, by twisting the rules, you can get away with it. But the best uh, you develop as a man or as a person only when you face up to reality, it might not be the most easiest option, but being ethical means Get, uh, going up, being honest about it and ready to bear the consequences of it. So though it at first it might sound like an easy option to, uh, you know, uh, to tra trade being a little bit uh, twisting the rules and all, but I'll still will never trade my integrity and my ethics for anything in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much to us, Master Jatanshu, and indeed fully agree with you. I think almost all of us would never trade our ethics for anything in the world. And thank you so much for presenting your opinion very, very effectively to us, Mr. Tanshu. Now, since we are running out of time, I would prefer to stop the table topic section here, and I would invite our table, our timer of the day to give the timer's report, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Fahim Khan. Uh, all of, all of these uh, table topic speakers are qualified. Can we know the timing, please? OK. Uh, first speaker, they take an uh, one minute, uh, 45 seconds. And uh, second speaker, they take an uh, one minute, uh, 20 seconds. And third speaker, they, they take an one minute, uh, 20 seconds. And the last speaker taken one minute, 45 seconds. Fantastic. So. Thanks everyone, and I would encourage everyone to vote for the best speaker. The first speaker was Toastmaster Satish Devan. He chose historical information over gut feeling and the market forecast. And then we have a Toastmaster Lee, if, I, if I'm not wrong. The Toastmaster Lee chose the certainties over the probabilities. We had the Toastmaster Ravi. He was trying to explain the concept of the trading to five years old, old kid. And he was simply said, 
it is only give and take. And then finally, we had the last speaker, Toast Majatanshu, who said that ethics is the paramount in our life and we can never trade it off. Please go ahead and vote for the best speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Prime, for the wonderful uh, table topic session. Thanks a lot. So while we, uh, the link has been post, uh, posted uh, for the best speaker. Uh, now I would invite uh, the, uh, the silent role players. For coming up and giving their reports. I would invite uh, for first the grammarian and our Elvitus. counter report. No, evaluation is attending. Speech evaluation. Yes, yeah. So you need to call the evaluators. Oh, sorry. So, oh, uh, I would like to call the uh, prepared speech evaluation uh, session. And uh, first, uh, I would uh, uh, call Mr. Kuddus Ahmed, Toastmaster, the evaluation of uh, Toastmaster Jatanshu. Good morning, uh, Toastmaster of the day and rest of the Toastmaster and guests. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Jatanshu. Really, you have selected a very live topic. The people are debating and saying both ways. The, the, you rightly captured that the only one side views is a predominant. People are listening, but the other part of the people, which you mentioned that this is the 500 people, good scientists in 2019, they try to cover the other side of the climate change. They try to convince. You clearly mentioned that. Other side need to be looked in perspective in the well-being of the people engaging with the society and welfare of the society. It is not urgent. It is not like uh, something is falling. This is other part of the view. You perfectly align with your speech, your argument, and all the things. One more thing you have uh, mentioned, where, have taken a feedback, like last feedback was that your time for the suit for the meeting was not suitable because it was a bit longer than that. You perfectly arrange your meeting uh, speech today, and it is well suited to the time. Also, one thing I would like to mention that. Uh, your uh, feedback on the clarity of thoughts. Your eye to eye contact was good. Gesturing again, very good. And the way with the ease you presented your speech, your level was good. And people can understand it. Just a word I would like to uh, say based on that, your speech that the, try to involve the audience. Topic was very interesting. Everybody was glued to, glued to listen this. But if you take feedback, may it improves the things uh, may gives more uh, audience involvement in that. So with this, I would like to say really a great topic, great coverage. Accommodation of the feedback from the previous meeting. Well done, Mr. Jatanshu. Great. And would be looking forward to listen you again in the future Toastmaster meetings. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster. Thanks for the wonderful evaluation. Uh, now I do invite uh, Toastmaster Jacob John to give the evaluation for Madam Toastmaster Sunita. Jacob. Good morning everyone and a special good morning to my target speaker DTM. Sorry, uh, to Madam Toastmaster Sunita. Uh, Toastmaster Sunita was attempting a level one speech uh, and the purpose of the speech was pretty clear that she was, she was supposed to research and bring a topic and present in front of us. So she brought a subject 
that is piano. And everyone expected, especially me expected something musical basically, and because piano, everyone can connect to their heart. And what she has done basically, she referred the Encyclopedia Britannica. The, pro the purpose itself calls for the research show, so she has gone to that particular site and she brought in much more information from there about piano. Thank you very much for that. The opening was catchy and everyone were looking for what about the piano you are going to tell. The, how the piano is organized, in which type of instrument it is coming. You have given a thorough research and you brought in the points. Very good attempt for that. And in that, another one thing I really want to appreciate you is basically you brought in a personal experience that when you were small, the, you, how difficult for you to play with your left hand. Everyone would be able to connect with that. Overall, the speech was ex, uh, uh, um, above average and the, the, the objectives are met. However, in one side, I would like to point out a couple of things which you can improve in the future. That is nothing but you need to summarize your speech at the end. Where I have seen there is an abrupt ending basically because after the play, after the musical play, there was nothing there. There was a silence. So when you need to come with your next speech, ensure that your speech is properly composed with opening body and conclusion. All the best to your future. PBS. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Jacob, for the uh, always encouraging uh, uh, evolution. Now I would uh, quickly ask our uh, silent role players to give evolution, and uh, then uh, uh, Madam Toastmaster uh, DTM uh, uh, Toastmaster Deepa can evaluate. Uh, first, I would invite. Uh, uh, our grammarian and our accountant, uh, uh, Toastmaster Manaranjan Paul, to give his report. Good morning, everyone, again. So today, all the speaker was uh, fantastic. Actually, there was a no error. It was flawless, all the speakers. We have heard the word of the day using by uh, Sunita, but I will recommend other speaker it was also not used that much, which supposed to be used word of the day. So this is the one point and we also learn very good word from uh, speaker uh, Bipin. So like metaphors, refutes, this kind of word is he, he was using repeatedly and which is very good. Ethos, pathos, lagos, this concept he is explained very good, which is one of the good aspect. So that's from my end. Thank you, Amman uh, I would request uh, Toastmaster Ravi to come up and give his uh, word master report. Good morning, everyone, once again. Uh, uh, as my, uh, uh, as Toastmaster uh, Manoranjan said, the word of the day could have been maybe used uh, uh, more. It was uh, used uh, only uh, four times in whole uh, meeting, uh, but the word was uh, quite simple and maybe we can use it uh, more. Um, uh, times. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you, Ravi. Now I, I request uh, Madam Toastmaster Deepa for giving us a general evaluation session on how the meeting went and what are the improvements we, we can do. Thank you so much, uh, TMOD Mahmoudi. Um, I'm at the very outset, I need to acknowledge how Petrofac has improved in the last one year or so. When I actually started attending the meetings, the attendee list was uh, shorter and uh, the the quality of uh, uh, the, uh, the sessions itself, you know, uh, it left a lot uh, wanting in, uh, in, in its old presentation. But now when I sit and I watch, and especially under the new XCOM, uh, the only word that comes to my mind is piffy. Whether it is the sergeant at arms who set the tone for the meeting in her chirpy voice, who explained the protocol and categorically and clearly expressed 
the way the session should continue, uh, that is commendable. And followed uh, immediately by the president, we uh, never lose, he said, we only learn. That actually set the note for the session itself. So um, I would also like to acknowledge uh, Toastmaster Mohanad uh, at the way he was very mindful of acknowledging the guest. I would say a president's address, which was very officious and very, very professional, very well done. The educational session which followed, what can I say about it? I thought it was very, very consummate in the sense that the slides were delectable. The, the, the way he explained what debate is all about, when he said it's all about conviction and negotiation, it showed that, you know, it is not a confrontational uh, contest that we are having, but something which is very, very, um, um, it is just meant to make you battle ready in a very polite way. He explained the roles, the order of speaking, the content of your speeches, the timing modalities, the judging criteria, etiquette and everything. So that was a very well presented educational session. Uh, and what I particularly liked is the way Toastmaster Mohanad in the chat box had a synopsis of the educational session. So if you're just taking a screenshot of it, in short, you would know what the educational session was all about. So uh, I should commend all of you in the way you're invested in Toastmasters uh, at the at this um, session. Then the, in the uh, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Mohanadi uh, Barmal, Mohamadi Barmal, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I must commend you on the way you switched the themes in the last minute. Um, October 2nd is Gandhi Jayanti, so perhaps that was the idea behind your theme to begin with, but um, a mindful president pointed out uh, that it could also be a double-edged sword. So uh, I am a keen student of history like uh, Toastmaster Satish, so I enjoyed the way you had your slides and the way you explained about salt trade, about horses, about silk routes. Um, I don't know what the rationale behind the choice of this theme was in the last minute, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. There was a, a nice reference to the role players being uh, fellow travelers. Uh, some of the in, uh, information that you gave us was very, very interesting and uh, it, it involved the audience. So in so far as that is concerned, the theme of the day was very, very well attacked. So uh, I must commend you on that as well. Then coming to Toastmaster Kirana um, as a timer. Uh, you are doing a thorough job. You're very mindful of uh, how to conduct it. You explained how we, uh, the timing techniques and things like that. But I would uh, recommend that you take charge of the proceedings because the reins are in your hands. You have the timing device with you. So you should be the one to make some right noises at the right time, but politely to indicate to the, to the role players that they may perhaps be exceeding their time. You have the right to do it, so please utilize the right that has been given to you. Um, at, at some points in time, you were actually 20 to 22 minutes behind the agenda, so you know you need to be uh, cha taking charge of the proceedings. Um, otherwise, I think you did a fantastic job. The grammarian, Toastmaster Manoranjan Paul, uh, again, you had very, very valid um, uh, pointers as to where, which way the English was taken in today's uh, session. But I would also recommend you again, take charge and give us recommendations on where we are going wrong, especially when we use crutch words and uh, use uh, sounds like R, which I tend to use quite a bit. So you please point it out to us so that we become better communicators. And the word master of the day, ameliorate is a fantastic job. My job today as a general evaluator is to ameliorate the the, the health of uh, the club uh, uh, sessions. So uh, that's a good word. I would recommend that you use slides so that we know exactly um, how you spell it and how you use it with examples. But again, what I liked about your session was the way you explained how this word is normally wrongly used interchanging it with elevating. So that again was a good point that I noted. Two speakers, the same project they did, but they uh, their outlook was completely different. While one spoke about music, the other spoke about climate change. Uh, I just have one recommendation for Toastmaster Jitanshu. While your script was so beautifully researched, you had a lot of uh, uh, explanations on what uh, carbon emission and footprint was all about. I would have loved to hear about what your opinion of this uh, conundrum, whether it is actually a climate change is a hoax or it is a reality. I would have loved to hear your opinion about it because it was your research and it was your opinion that we were looking for. But otherwise, a very well presented uh, research. 
Toastmaster Ju uh, Sunita, again, very beautifully done. Uh, uh, your voice is like the piano itself, so it was very, very mesmerizing. But again, your personal experience as a child with the piano, that again, uh, I would have loved to hear. But I'm so happy for the first time I understood that piano is indeed a stringed instrument. That's something I didn't know. Your two evaluators did wonderful jobs in terms of giving very, very encouraging recommendations. Very well done but also please give them uh, pointers as to where they can improve. Um, that would help them become better speakers. Then the table topic session, I uh, was so grateful to Toastmaster Fahim for becoming time conscious and cutting down from eight uh, topics to four. Again, a very, very professionally con uh, conducted uh, session in itself. Uh, the Your topics, I must say, were very, very cerebral. It required time for us to assimilate and understand and then speak on it. But again, um, they were very, very thought provoking. And it was in keeping with the theme that showed the kind of effort you had taken in presenting the, um, um, the, the session itself. Um, I have a couple of recommendations for the speakers. The first one, uh, you could have given uh, an explanation. That is, if you can pick up only one method. So uh, for trading, when you when you spoke about historical information, pro probably you could have picked up one product and given us a recommendation on how to uh, you know, validate your opinion. The second speaker, Ravi Upadhyay, uh, I would just recommend you not to repeat your ideas because there was repetition. Uh, try and introduce new ideas, given more examples. There was so much scope in your topic for role play. How will you explain the concept of trading? So you could have done that role play beautifully and elevated the session itself. Then uh, Toastmaster Lee, I thought it's, you spoke from the heart and it was very well attempted and your explanation uh, of your, uh, you, the way you explained your opinion was also very nicely done. Toastmaster Jatanshu, what is most precious thing? Uh, I thought you brought in this beautiful concept of integrity, which was very, very well attempted. Uh, I thought all in all, it was a wonderful session. I hope I've not mixed, missed out any of the role players, um, but a very well done session, very, very energetic and uh, well conducted by Toastmaster uh, Mohammadi. And uh, once again, uh, congratulations for being able to switch the uh, theme at the very last moment. Petrofac, you're doing well, and I'm, I hope that you do well in your debate session as well. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, for the emulated. Always we are encouraged to uh, hear from you. Thanks a lot and being a part of our journey in the difficult times we had. Now to just to conclude my theme of the day, that is a uh, read. I would encourage that as a, as a Toastmaster, we can make a difference. We all have some talents and we can collaborate on something which we can use for our financial benefit because we are all are from uh, one region. We can collaborate on the technology, we can collaborate and do and take some lead in doing of our own. OK, I invite uh, all of you because I am looking for those type of uh, people to collaborate and I'm, I always be positive in listening to anybody who sells his ideas. So it's a way we may succeed. It's only one person success rate, but we can always have a, that mindset to make wealth and create better generation, uh, future for a better generation. So over to the, then I would like to have a, uh, Satish to post the uh, link for the best uh, role player. Yes. And with this, uh, I would hand over the proceedings to our uh, to, um, uh, president, Toastmaster Mohanad. Over to Toastmaster Mohanad. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammadi, and we're looking forward to hear you in the future again. Um, now, uh, please, if everyone has voted, Please vote for the, uh, the three rule players. And uh, I just want to remind everyone that few of few have not sent their education plan and which project speeches they would like to have. So please send it to, uh, to the uh, Satish.
or VB education. Uh, and also few of us have not uh, renewed the, their uh, fees for the next six months. So please send it to Toastmaster Shankar. And the, um, the competition coming next meeting, please everyone participate. If you don't want to participate, please attend because this is it's, uh, you learn that how this competition is there and how this debate. And then you can participate maybe in the next year if you wish. OK, so th there'll be lots of benefits. There'll be other rules players. We need we need timer. We need different. So it's not even if you're not participating, please look at it. I put the topic. So the topic for first competition, there will be two topics are there. One topic is known. Now you have two weeks to prepare and so research and keep points in your mind and see different things. And I'll try to send you uh, other debates and other clubs which is currently ongoing so you can maybe visit them maybe depends on your time and see how they are debating especially people who have never seen debates before so you can see other clubs how they debate and and try to apply it rehearse it and there are two mentors for you to help you to achieve your goals and then, then we will select three members out of the two teams and they will represent Peter Factos Masters in the next competition excellent now the time for for the winning time for winning and uh, i i uh, i want to appreciate our uh, our um, uh, trainer today but uh, fortunately has left the meeting today so i would like to announce the winners today so let me get the trophies There's lots of trophies great let's know and OK, our best speaker, our best speaker today, Toastmaster Sonita, and she won this one kilo of silver. <laughs> and the next winner today is our best evaluator, Toastmaster Jacob. And he win this big heart. <laughs> the next row, the next winners is our who's who can guess our our coach Toastmaster Fahim. Our table topic masters, thank you all. Please switch on your camera for. But uh, there is one Tobil Topic Masters. Who's the winner for Tobil Topic Master? Yes, Toastmaster Lee. Toastmaster Lee, he has won uh, this trophy. Please give him great applause. He come from overseas and he could beat us all. Excellent, Toastmaster Lee. So I appreciate it if everyone switch on his camera in order to take a photo for memory. Hope that everyone can see. Let me see. Maybe we put everyone in seat. Let's put everyone in seats. While Sunita taking the snapshot. I can't see everyone in seats, but okay. I can see everyone. Fine. I'm just getting Toastmaster Lee, so we have to go and congratulate him again. Okay. So Toastmaster Lee, you are the winner of today, Table Topic Master. Can you hear us? Thanks for being with us. Please switch on the camera and you can see everyone is there. Farida, a little bit focus on your camera, camera going and coming back. I can't see Farida. Yeah, Farida, but her camera is on, but I think she, some lighting issue is there. Is it? Because I can't see the... I'm sorry, I'm in the hospital. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah, 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 one, two, um... three. Yay! That's excellent. Uh, meeting is adjourned. We are late Thank by you. 10 minutes, but it's okay. Uh, we did our best today. Thank you. And please prepare and let's, uh, let's work for the next session. Thank you.